that's a good shot of the bench. for about 10 breaths. Just normal breathing. Last one. This is a good, I've been doing this when I take my walks. It's really fun to do while you're walking, but then, you know, don't crash into it. Oh, good. 
good. And last one, inhale back, exhale front. Rotate the whole torso a little bit, and then we're going to go to the knee hip thing. Stomach, hips. Other direction. Okay, take a step forward and back. Gentle lunge until your knee is warmed up. Circles. You can hold your quad and feel it rippling under your hands, doing all that hard work for you. You can feel the hip flexor stretching. Let's go the other way. Figure eight. Now you're digging in a little deeper with the quad. Good. And the other direction. And let's see infinity signs. So now a horizontal figure eight. And the other direction, at your own pace, so don't let me rush you. And step up, step back, other leg. You don't have to go in too deep at first. Let the muscle warm up, it'll take you there. This is getting the tendons laterally as well, you know, on the knee. Okay, good. Okay, let's see who can cop the squat. Careful with the cut legs, the people with cut legs. You don't want to stretch your skin, probably, you know. Pop off your band-aid. How did you get cut? Don't you usually get scraped when you fall yeah, off your bike? I don't know. I think it was a pedal. Yeah, your bike probably did. Came down. See if you can flap your legs a little bit. Put your elbows in between. All right. Nobody can do that, so let's not even do that. Be careful with that. If you can't, if you, if your butt can't touch. So that if your butt can't touch, you can go part way. You can go part way. Put a little buffer in there with your arms, your forearms. And you can put some pressure on your calves like this. If you have a walking practice, a hiking practice, then you, 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 the calf massage feels pretty good. Is calf the singular of calves? Your calf. It's like a baby cow. It's not spelled any different either. All right. So uh, having having warmed our quads, we're going to stretch them. You could, if 
you want to stretch them, and, and you can put a finger on a wall or something for a touchstone if it helps you balance. And then you want to push your hips forward and pull your knee back towards your other knee. So that, that you go in deeper there, you can feel it's like a deeper layer of muscles. So just doing this is, is like, eh, to just have it up. That's beautiful, Carrie. So when you arch your hips forward and try to touch your knee to your other knee, it's gonna be a deeper stretch. You don't, don't make it like excruciating, but go in that direction. You're trying to go in that direction. So the thing that we just tightened, now we just expanded, and that's a theme throughout all of this kind of training. Yeah, and this is a more active way to do it, is to kick back. So try to feel your center of your palm get hit by your heel. Good. There's a Chinese saying in Kung Fu circles, the, kneel, the knees are like tofu. Uh, it breaks apart easily, it's gooey. <laughs> okay, so carefully we're going to do a front stretch, carefully. If you want to use your surface, you can. Why don't, um, let's do two legs at the same time first. So with the knees bent slightly, just hands on the knees, look forward, straighten your back, stick your butt out. Gently start pushing the knees back. Feel that stretch just locally in the hamstring, not in the back. Look up, look forward, look up, look forward. If you can travel down to the floor, touch it with your fingertips and rock forward and back. And you're gonna feel your hamstrings getting stretched. Okay, now come up straight. Now uh, turn your foot in to start, so it should stretch and you should feel it turning in the hip, stretching inside, and then turn it out. Turn it out, and if you can, bend forward. So that's stretching the, the flank, the, the side of the leg a lot. Let's do the other leg. Pull your foot, stretch your calf. And then turn it in. And lastly, turn it out. That's a deep one. Remember it turns out from the hip, not the knee. I don't think anybody, you shouldn't unscrew from the knee. The hip is the ball joint socket, not the knee. The knee is a hinge. So respect that. This is a good one what Sandy's doing. You just push off your surface a little bit, stretch your, your uh, quad. Like bike injuries and surgeries on the legs, but 
if, if you, you don't hit your wound, down the flanks, up the inseam, down the fronts, up the inseam. You don't you don't slap the patella. You go around the knee cap, right? So when you go down stomach meridian, just go around your knee cap, go along your shin bone on the outside, and then up the flanks. Try to get your ankles. Up the, I'm sorry, up the inseam. Spend a little time here. Move some lymph. It should sting. You want it to sting. Okay, hit from the kidneys down. Special time behind the knees. And up the inseam. Okay, we're good and ready to start some Qigong. Let's do the really calming one. Start above the pubis at 6 o'clock. We're going to turn, and that would be your, to your own right. And then you get to 12 o'clock and go back down to 6 o'clock. Exhale. Inhale, tighten perineum. Reverse breath. Exhale, release. So this helps you get into the Tai Chi posture and mentality of slow, sink, relax. Exhale down. Four. So we're going to try to hit our marker of 30. Tip of the tongue on the upper palate, breathe lightly through the nose. to 10, 20 more. Keep working the perineum. This is so easy, you can really focus on that. Squeeze it tight. This will help you to not wet yourself in those moments when you have to go and there's no, there's often no toilet around nowadays. Eyes gaze straight ahead, don't look down. So the perineum is the tightest when you're at 12 o'clock. It's the most relaxed at 6 o'clock. You, you don't want your arms to have so much innate movement, Karen. You want to be twisting your body to get your arms to move. And you're standing up straight, and then you're sinking on the descent. From 12 to 6, you sink. From 6 to 12, you stand up. We're up to about 20, 10 more. And let me just say that if you went the other direction, that would be the direction of encouraging nutrients from the chime where it breaks down in your in your small intestines before it turns to crap, it's encouraging nutrients to go be, get processed. Whereas going the direction we're going in now, since it's morning, it's we're still eliminating, right? We're, this is the, this encourages elimination, going clockwise. Five more. Inhale, squeeze. Remember to squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Exhale, release, release, release. This is a 
simplest way I found to teach Taoist breath So let's add to that. So as you know, the opening of Tai Chi form, of short form, is exactly that breath. It's just that you lift the arms, kind of like you're going to do the robot reset, only they're slightly bent. Perineum is the tightest at this point. Elbows bend and drop, and then drop body weight, release perineum. So that's your opening breath to a lot of Qigong forms and to short form. Now closing breath involves uh, the saliva. So that's when we swallow and tighten our throats at the apex of the movement. So let's let's do closing breath together. So you, your arms come up in a big circle, your perineum is getting tight, tight, tight. And it's at its tightest when your arms are 45 degrees up and you're looking up through this diamond shape. Swallow your saliva. And then, and your perineum's tight. Now release the perineum and track the saliva down. In your mind's eye, that saliva is traveling down your esophagus, nourishing your stomach with the rich enzymes that are in saliva. And two more. Inhale, closing breath, tightening perineum. Your, your own ecosystem, your own biosphere. Swallow saliva, perineum is tight. Exhale, release. So at that moment, you're not breathing when you're swallowing. And you're tight at the top of a tube and at the bottom of the tube, right? And last closing breath. Drawing a big circle, perineum's getting tight, tight, tighter. Wow, saliva, release perineum. So most Tai Chi forms begin this way and end this way. They, they stick a little bit of the, the grandmother of Tai Chi is Qi Gong. It's many thousands of years older than Tai Chi. Tai Chi took a long time to produce. It's only between six and Four to eight hundred years old. It's arguable. It, they still debate about it in in uh, um, you know the the uh, PRC uh, People's Republic of China has big arguments and symposiums about the true origins of Tai Chi. It's it's a hot topic <laughs> still. Um, okay, I think we're ready to begin the form. So uh, well, let's go over the names of stances. So we'll start with the really most simplistic one. And, and so if you've had a dance background, just bend your knees. That's like the first position plie comfortably. Lift one heel. That foot is yin. The other foot is yang. This is called a closed empty. So both knees are bent. Well, that's it. OK, now we're going to put the left heel down. Lift the right. It, it doesn't matter which one you start with. So now the full leg is yang. The empty leg, empty because you can lift it, empty of weight, is yin. Right? So you want to be able to lift it without falling over. That's a lot about what Tai Chi is about, is being able to stand on one leg without falling over. Okay. And let's shift to the other side. So let's do it like we're pumping an invisible bicycle. And one side. And the other side, but stay down, stay down, stay low, stay connected to gravity. Feel the pull of gravity. Lift the crown point, but sink into the legs. You're, you're overturning out, Karen, you don't have to turn out that much. Is it hurting your cut? Yeah, be careful. Okay, so let's go to one empty. And lift the knee. That's a, called a rooster. When the knee is bent, it's called a low rooster. When you're standing up straight, it's just a rooster. And yeah, birds do that, so good name. And other side, closed empty. 
Low rooster. Rooster. Low rooster. Closed empty. Very methodical, isn't it? Okay. Enough of that. So most things start with a closed empty. Most things that positions you're going to go to, you shift to a closed empty to get to the next posture. So let's go over some of those next postures. Okay. So we're going to have the ones that are. Uh, some are from your knee to your foot wide, and others are from your hip to your foot wide. Now, if you're older and new to Tai Chi, you don't go as wide. But if, you, if you're athletic or younger, you can go the length of your leg with your stride. You can. So let's start with closed empty. Let's do the left leg empty, the right leg full. Good. And now put the toe in front. That's called an empty posture. This is a closed empty. Now put the heel down. That's a Tai Chi posture. Now you're going to bend the front knee with the back heel. That's called a unicorn. Put your hands on your butt so your butt doesn't. So you want your hips and, and shoulders to be stacked up straight. Now roll back to the Tai Chi. Put the foot back. Right Tai Chi. Oh, we'll go to closed empty. Tai Chi. And down to unicorn. Back knee an inch. Back knee an inch. Inch from the ground. And back to Tai Chi. And back to unicorn. So you can see how you can get a total workout. Well, a total quad workout. <laughs> Just staying in one spot. You know, in case we go to a total lockdown. You guys can't even come out to play anymore, okay? All right, now there's another posture called a lotus. Um, so be careful with this one. So when you're in Tai Chi, it's like a twisted unicorn. You just turn out, and then you bend the back knee. Right? That's called a lotus. And you can come back to the Tai Chi. You can turn to the other side. Turn out, then and sink. Now you're in a lotus. If you push that leg back, and so you go to the the, the width, the, the wide stance, that's called a high lotus. And that's a huge quadricep stretch. You can play with that. You can feel what it's doing a lot. And let's try to get to the high lotus another way. So there's a lot of ways to get to high lotus. Well, let's try to get to it the same way. I don't know, let's not confuse the body. So now we're in the other unicorn. No, wait a minute, which one was it? The other Tai Chi unicorn. Yes, yeah, it's this one. And pivot to the lotus, and then push your other leg back. And so it's the back leg quad stretch. And if you lift the heel, you're stretching your, your tendons in your foot. Yeah, that's really nice, Sandy. So high lotus is admittedly the most difficult posture in short form because it's twisted. So that's hard. It's hard. On, it's, there's a lot of people lose balance with that. Um, let's go to the most post, the most used posture in short form is bow and arrow. So if you start with a closed empty, take a giant step. So in that step, if you notice, there's what we call a transitional Tai Chi. Beautiful. Sink, transitional Tai Chi, lunge to the bow and arrow. OK, now play with it and feel. Did, did you guys get the post of the Wu style guy, a woman? I sent it out as an email. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't her form beautiful? But you notice this line. Did you see that line? They keep this line for their straight back. They're on that angle. They don't break here. So I'm uh, just to make you aware that good form is different from style to style. So we break here. Let's go to the other bow and arrow. We're definitely not keeping this as one long line. We're having a broken line here. And this is straight up. So their straight back looks like this, and our straight back looks like that. Okay, so one of the most important things in 
Tai Chi is light stepping, so the control with the back leg is just the most prevalent theme, is controlling that back weighted leg. So the, the other leg can be empty and not go bonk. That's like, I like to tell students, that's like a Tai Chi fart. If you're in a classroom and somebody's foot makes a noise, very bad, bad form. Should be really quiet, light stepping, stealthy. <laughs> Um, but rooted, okay? All right, so we're going to do something. Uh, a lot of teachers have this. We're going to stay tangent to a form line and just advance and retreat in what we call a Tai Chi walk, okay? So you're going to sink the weight in. It's like a first position plie. Go to the left, closed, empty. Put the toe in front, straight in front. Not, not the direction that's pointed. Just turn in the hip and go in front. Yeah, no weight on it, should be able to lift it. Touch the heel down, Tai Chi. Half step, lunge to the bow and arrow. Twist to the high lotus. Pivot back to the bow and arrow. And closed empty. Regular empty. Tai Chi. Half step, lunge to the bow and arrow. Good. Turn out the front toe. Now we're just going to eliminate all the stages and just swing it through as if the leg is on a hinge, the hinge being the hip flexor. Just slowly swing it through, step to the bow and arrow. Good. Turn out and step. Okay, we're going to retreat. Shift back to what we call flat footed empty. And now you can drag the heel if you want. Step back, shift back, pivot on the front ball of the foot to adjust. So this feels wider than comfortable. Now drag the heel back, depending on how far back you step. Adjust the ball to make it straight, then drag the heel. So we're clinging to the floor in this step. Right, good. All right, pretty good. There's not much more else to the Tai Chi form and those basic things that we do in a lot of, you know, we do different things with the arms. All right, so for the benefit of it all, let's 